Good evening, Cyber Friends. It's the Midi Man coming at you again from Walker's Music. We get another word for the day. Uh, Friday night edition, people. And we give God all the praise and honor and glory as usual. And we thank Him for each and every one of you. Cyber Friends, you know who you are. As you see the title of this video tonight, it said there is nothing new under the sun. Now, this was one of all. Uh, King Solomon. It was one of King Solomon's favorite uh, quotes. Matter of fact, he said, there's nothing new under the sun. In other words, there's nothing that have been done that's not, that are being done now that has not been done in the past. So we just said that that background, no, I just ignore it, please. Uh, I, it's, it seemed like to me, I don't get that until I start doing a video. But nevertheless, we're going to go ahead on. Uh, we want to let, let everybody know something here that what I mean when I said there is nothing new and what King Solomon meant. Because he was the one that coined this phrase there is nothing new under the sun. People, let me tell you something. We can go all the way back in human history, back to the Garden of Eden. We can go all the way back to that point. That's back at the very beginning. And you can clearly see the pattern of what man, what he did in the garden up until this present time. Now, I don't want to sound negative. Because that's the last thing I would want to do. I'm not, I'm not a negative person, but I am a realist. And I do speak the truth as far as I know it. That's why I study. And I try to read the Bible to the best of my ability. Sit down with the Holy Spirit to make certain that I'm getting the real truth. And not just following something that somebody else said. Even though there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes you can learn from some people, but you also can get error from other people as well. So you need to sit down with the Holy Spirit and make certain that you let the Spirit show you these things, teach you these things, that way you will be safe. That's your safety net. Now what I'm saying, we're coming up to the season, we're already in the season, whereas what we call Christmas, everybody's getting ready, they're doing first one thing and another. And I'm here not to judge anybody according to what they want to do. Hey, that's your dime. You do it the way you want to do it. I hear that I doubt not judge anybody for the way they want to celebrate, however they want to celebrate. That's not my job to judge anyone. But I want you to see the scripture. I want you to see it in the light of the scripture, in the light of God's word. God's word always going to stand to trump everything else. Now, what I mean by that, first of all, let us look. We lost in the Garden of Eden, point blank. We lost, period. We sold out straight to Satan. Our father Adam done that. Our father Adam done that. So we sold out to eat to, to Satan. Therefore, we turned all the authority over to Satan. We done it. The reason I say we, because it was our father Adam that done it. Well, if you go on through, if you walk on through the Bible, and you can see, whereas man was lost in this world without any hope at all. Without any hope. But as you saw, grace was still operating. Grace was still operating because out of all the stuff that mankind did, God didn't destroy them. So grace was even working in the very early of existence. But people don't study enough to see that. Grace was working after Adam sinned. I mean... God was very upset at Satan, really. He was disappointed in Adam, but he was very upset at Satan. But nevertheless, God still did not destroy everything right then. He was, his grace was still abounding even back in that time. But a lot of people can't see it. Because, see, what we do, people, we see what we want to see. Amen. Now, come on now. We see what we want to see. Well, you see, at any rate, I, I'm looking. I followed, I followed that timeline from, from Genesis to Revelation. 
I have followed it and I've saw mankind. Everything man did, even after he messed up in the garden, it was all running toward the cross. It was running toward the cross of Jesus. But let me show you something. God dealt with a certain people. He just didn't deal with all the world. He dealt with a certain people. And he handmade those people. Those people were the Jews. Those people were made from a Gentile man named Abraham. Or I should say Abram. That was his Gentile name, Abram. But when God got to dealing with Abram, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. See, in other words, when you see we, we got to be changed in order for God to use you, God going to change you. And he most of the time will change your name to fit your character. Amen. So as we look at it, God was using Abraham. He used Abraham, Abram and Sarai to make this Jewish nation the Hebrew people. He also told them that they were going to sojourn in a strange country and they were going to be ill-treated. 400 years or four generations. People are always talking about what is a generation. How can you say that when God told Abraham that your people were going to be mistreated and ill-treated for four generations and then you look at it, how can you say how long is a generation when the Bible tells you that they stayed in Egyptian slavery for 430 years? That lets you know you don't count the 30 years when Moses was running because he tried to get ahead of God. But you count the 400 that were before. It was 400 years. So that lets you know that a generation has got to be 100 years. We don't study our Bibles. Well, at any rate, I didn't come here for that. I know it sounds like it, but I didn't come here for that. Jesus, it was prophesied in the Garden of Eden that Jesus would come. I don't believe that, do you? You said, many men, how can it be prophesied when there wasn't no prophet? God was there, wasn't it? God, did, you must have forgot what God told, what God told Satan about the woman's seed and his seed. He said, you were going to bruise his heel and he was going to crush your head. In other words, he struck Jesus' heel on Calvary, but Jesus crushed his head. He didn't have no idea that was going to happen. That was a prophecy. That's why I tell you, we don't study. We just take somebody's word for it and run with it. All right? We know that that happened at, at Calvary. But as you go back, go back to the, go back to the Egyptian exodus. God incubated the old people, took care of them people, and raised up a whole nation of people right there in Egypt. That's right. He built the Jewish people right there in Egypt. Four generations. He said it didn't but 70 souls go down in there with Jacob and his 12 sons. It was 70 souls. Jacob, remember now, Joseph was already in Egypt. So you, can, you, you don't count him. You didn't count him. But it was 70 souls that made up the Jewish people at that particular time. God incubated them. Oh yeah, they were ill-treated, but God had a plan. God had a plan. He built them up, and it was, they, they, according to the certain scholars and historians that said that it was all over 2 million Jews left Egypt when they got rid of the Exodus out. It was over 2 million. So God had made a whole nation of people right there in Egypt of the Jewish people. This is where the Messiah would come from. That was God's plan all the time. Well, here we go, Gentiles. We all were pagan. We were lost in the world without God. Yes, we were. So when they got down, if you look at the time that they traveled from Egypt to the Red Sea, and from the Red Sea after crossing, from the Red Sea to Mount Sinai, where they received the law, the Jews did, not us, the Jews. You could see them people, they grumbled, they complained, they, 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 they murmur everything against Moses, Aaron, and God all the way to the, to the Mount Sinai. And even after they got the law, they broke it before they got it. And, and then Moses broke all ten of them. And then it was, it was a time or two out there. I know one time God told Moses to get your people and go. I don't even want to fool with them. God wanted to kill them. 
God wanted to kill every one of them out there in the, in the desert. Yes, he did. God wanted to kill every one of them. He said, you take your people and go. In other words, Jesus, God said, get out of my sight in so many words. But Moses pleaded for the people. And God repented, as usual. He repented because he loved them. He would, God was going to get Christ in this world through the Jewish people. Well, people, like I say, look at how they, they, they bitched and murmured all the way to the mountain. And then they kept on bitching and murmuring after they received the law. They still was hard-headed, just like us. Just like us today. Now, we wasn't under no law. Never was under no law. The law was given to the Israelites. But yet and still, on this side of the cross, we got, we got salvation through the Jews. It, our salvation came by way of the Jews, and we still bitch and murmur. We bitch and complain. Bitch and complain day by day. We don't thank God for nothing. And you know what? We don't want, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to surprise some of you with what I'm going to tell you right now. I just we did that background just to show you where it all come from. We can't talk about the Israelites, about how they bitched and murmur and how they complain. We can't talk about them because we do the same thing. And we got Jesus. You know what? That is the very reason why. And I'm, I, I'm not afraid to say it. I, I said and then, you know, hey, well, I know some ain't going to like it, but I could care less because it's the truth. You know what? When you talk, people hear prophecy. When they hear prophecy being taught, they don't like it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because deep down inside, really, people don't want Jesus to come back. Oh, ooh, yes, exactly. People do, some of us, I would say a lot of us, we do not want Jesus to come back. No, I come because we're in love with this present world. Amen. I'm going to tell you like it is. We, I can see it every day. We are in love with this present world, people. We don't want Jesus to come back. Let me tell you something. Jesus, when he walked on this earth, if you look at it, read the gospel, how he was ridiculed. People didn't like what he said when he was walking on this earth. A lot of, and, and we look at the first martyr called Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death because he held up and told the truth. People don't want the truth. That's why, that's why they stoned Stephen. The Jewish people stoned Stephen because he upheld Jesus and he told the truth. Same way he going to do you. See, let me tell you something. When you think you be talking about, oh, Lord, everybody like me. Well, I know you don't, you don't belong to Jesus. Everybody like you. Well, that, that means you compromising somewhere because if you following Christ, you are not going to be liked by, by very few. If you look at it, Jesus had very few he had a lot of followers when he was in Jerusalem as his earthly ministry because they had to sneak and get Jesus. If you know, now, we know that. We know that. But that was Jesus. That wasn't you. Jesus told us himself that if we do what's right and follow him, we were going to be hated by all people. So if you're up there talking about people like me, if you're trying to get people to like you, well, then you're not going to be Jesus' follower because if you're doing what's right and following Jesus, People are not going to like you, brothers and sisters. See, don't get fooled by that. See, this is what's the matter with a lot of us now. We love, we want to be identified with the world, even to the church. I'm a deacon, and I hate to say that, but I see it every day. You got people, even in the church, trying to identify with the world, but you can't. People, we cannot. I'm not saying you judge anyone, but you cannot love the world and, and, and cope. You cannot cope the world. In the Bible, he called it adultery. You can't be married to Christ and yet cope the world. You can't do that. That's an abomination. That's sin, period. But yet and still, we, a lot of us, we doing it every day. And we do, could care less about Christ because if we did, we would do better by him. We wouldn't have nothing too good for him. We got a lot of people that claim. We got a lot of people that claim, oh, I love the law. You tell them, I love the law. No, you don't. You want to give them two hours of your time. How you love something? No, you don't love the law. And then, you know, you know the word you be talking about. You'll see, in other words, the proof is in the pudding. Jesus done told us all this here sacrifice that we will have to make. 
the, the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, them boys, had to, they went into the fiery furnace because they refused to obey what the king said. Some of us talk about we love Jesus. The Hebrew boy didn't have Jesus at that particular time. Jesus hadn't manifested in the flesh, but he did manifest himself many times in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. That was Jesus. In other words, Jesus was the fire, the man, the fourth man in the fire, but they didn't know it. They didn't know it. Matter of fact, it's not even recorded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw the fourth man in the fire, but Nebuchadnezzar did. He saw him. It, it ain't recorded nowhere. Now, I know a lot of y'all have been telling folk that Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego did that because they saw the man. No, they didn't. They didn't see Jesus. They didn't see that fourth man in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar did, though. So they was there standing on their faith. Where's our faith? We got faith as long as everything going right. As long as we got a refrigerator, a refrigerator full of food and we got, if we drink wine, we got a cellar full of wine or whatever we got and we got money in the bank and everything. Oh man, he said, that don't take faith then. That, you see that. That's in there. But it takes faith when you ain't got it. How many of us going to praise the Lord when we don't have those things? Very, very few. That's how come you can tell the people of God. So now what I'm trying to get everybody to see on this night, in this season, I'm just going to show you. Just because people got a Bible up under their arm going to church on Sunday, that don't mean nothing. That ain't the way you tell it. You, you do it by the fruit. In other words, look at the sacrifices that they are willing to make. You hear what I say? Willing to make. A lot of times we can't do things that we won't, may want to do. Sometimes we are not in the position to do things. But it's the heart that God looks at. God looks at the heart. But how many of us right now, you got people that will get up in church on Sunday, especially the fourth Sunday this time, because we got fourth Sunday. That means Sunday for us as well as any of y'all. But it's Christmas Eve as well. Oh, we're going to have a lot of people going to hold up holy hands, and we're going to sing a few Christmas carols. And we're going to do all of the nine yards. But do that make you a Christian? No. No. That don't be more make you a Christian than going standing in a hospital and make you a doctor. I can go to the hospital all day long and stand in that hospital all day. That still won't make me the man no doctor. You can let me operate on you as you want if you're crazy. No. That don't make you a doctor. So going inside of a church with the stained glass windows and the white building does not make you a Christian no more than standing in a hospital make you a doctor. What make you a Christian, me man, is that the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ, when you belong to that, when you are sold out. Now, I'm not talking about do everything right because you're never going to do that. Jesus did that for us. We can't do that. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about your overall makeup. Your overall makeup. You know in whom you believe in. And you are willing to sacrifice even your life if it came to denying Christ. Whoo! Now that's some big, that's some big words, ain't it? Yes, because they're true. If you look at Peter, James, John, well, not John. John is the only one of those disciples that died a natural death. The only one. All of them were killed. Every one of them was killed. Even Apostle Paul was killed. So now you got some people, they won't even stand up for the law to just tell the truth in front of certain people. They are afraid to do that. Now what you think that they're going to do if they be faced with the sword? You're going to give in. People, this is what many men is trying to let everybody know. A lot of us are not willing. We, are, we don't want the Lord to come back. We, I don't care how much you say it. You do not love the Lord unless you are willing to go all the way to the ultimate sacrifice. Now, guess what? None of us really know what's in us until we get to that point. You know, I would love to sit here and say, I could do it. I can do it. I can do it. But how would I know would I do it unless I get sold out for Christ? Point blank. If I don't care for my life right now, and then when I get to that, it will not matter. I can tell you how you can do it. Look at yourself right now. Some of us sell ourselves out for nothing right now. It ain't the heat ain't even turned up yet. But right now, let us think that we are not going to get some government cheese. We already ready to give up. So now, don't I tell you where your stance going to be when the man of sin really show up? 
if we are left here. Now, I know a lot of people are saying it's depending on we are not being here. Now, I hope we don't. I hope when the man of sin be revealed, according to Thessalonians, when Paul said, when the man, we are going to be here until that man of sin be revealed. We will not leave here before then. I'm hoping that we go right after those. Because if you don't, I'm mighty afraid that some of us, maybe a lot of us, we may not be as, as bold as we think we are. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying. How you get ready? You do it by doing what God tell you to do now. You won't even do what God tell you to do now on the simple thing that we he asking us to do. Now, how are you going to stand when the heat get ready to turn up? We, I mean, when we go to church service on Sunday, we the pastor tell us, y'all, he done told us what we need to do. We, we won't obey. I, I, don't, I don't think it take all that. No, it take all that and then some more. No, it's just what you don't want to do. You, are, you done decided what God means now. Instead of doing what the Bible, it's a lot of things, y'all, in that Bible. A lot of things. But if you really look at it, the Bible ain't nothing but a love story. God is saying, do it my way. And I guarantee you it'll come out the best. You know what, y'all? Even if someone take our life on this side, guess what? That's all they can do. We ain't going to stay there. No way. Remember that. But if you compromise, you're going to die on this side, and then you're going to die and die again. You're going to the lake of fire. Because you don't refuse to do what the Lord said. You don't you done sold out Jesus. You don't said you don't want Jesus. That's what you're doing when you take the mark of the beast according to the scriptures, according to scholars. God ain't told me that. But I did see in the Bible where it said, He that taketh the mark of the beast will be forever doomed. Now I have said that. I've seen that in the Bible, in the book of Revelation. I've seen it uh, alert to that. So we got the it's just like I say. Taking the mark is just like us saying, I denounce Christ. That's exactly what it is. You giving your homage, you giving all your homage to Satan. Well, some of us already done, done that anyway. Number by a lot of means and measures. By a lot of means and measures. Just like the Israelite. Jesus, God told the Israelite, don't have no other God before me. That was that first commandment. But guess what? That's the first thing they did. They built the calf. See what I mean? The first commandment, they already done broke that. You ain't got to worry about the other nine because they done broke the first one. So in other words, this is a, where we at. This is where we stand. And I know this is going to be a pretty long video, but I don't care. I, if you ain't got time to look at it all at once, go back and check it out again and, and do, do a little bit more later. What I'm saying here, people, we're going to keep right on diddling in the dangles. If that could be, I'm just, I, I made that completely up. But we're going to keep on diddling and keep on Messing around. Thinking God going to understand. God is not going to understand. He have told us what to do. Jesus said, look, Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment. Love the Lord with all thy heart, mind, soul, and your strength. Everything you got. And do the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you don't believe that consummate all the commandment, look at it. If you love me, you ain't going to lie on me. You ain't going to kill me. Huh? And if you're married, if I'm married to you, you ain't going to commit a dirt on me. No, because you love me. Love covers it all. Guess how many we say you go, I'm, I got to keep it real and in the church. How many people that hug you on a Sunday in the church talking about I love you? Yeah, I hope you don't believe that. Yeah, I'm just telling like, very few. They Very few, and I heard T.D. Jake say it. They wouldn't give you a ham sandwich if you were starving to death. But yet still they could talk about I love you. No, you don't love me. You ain't give me a cool drink of water in Jesus' name. But Jesus done said, this is what we must do. We must love the Lord and love our neighbor as ourselves. Now that ain't but two. And still we fall. Amen. We still fall. But there are other things that's in the scripture. I'm not going to say it'll take you to hell because I don't know. God didn't give me that job. He didn't give me that job. I ain't going to say none of it's going to take you to hell. But I'm just going to speak what Jesus said. And the, and the Apostle Paul was more, look like to me, the Apostle Paul done more than any of the Jesus disciples. And that Jesus dealt more with Apostle Paul than he did most of his disciples. Yes, he did. And I think he could be an authority on what he tried to tell us on a way we should live. He said, bring ye the first of the week, things that you would offer to God. 
It's supposed to be your first fruits, people. It's supposed to be our first fruit. And you know what? It ain't the amount, but it's the it's the the percentage. It is that what God required from He required that from the Israelite. Remember that now. He required that from the Israelite. Remember? We would we didn't have no law. But since Jesus, I mean, it, it, it seemed to differ to me. Now, it just seemed right to me. Maybe I'm a fool. I don't know. But it just seemed right to me if God gave his best. Jesus was God's best. That was his only son. If he gave his best that I might have a right to the tree of life and live with him forever in a fantastic body, never going to be sick no more, never going to die no more. If, G, if God did all that for me, suddenly it looked like I can give him 10%. Now, he didn't ask it from me. Really, he didn't ask it from you. No. Remember, the law never was for us Gentiles. The law was for the Jews. But it wasn't for us. But it just seemed right to me that if you, God has given us all of that, and we can't give him 10%. Something wrong with that picture to me, especially if you say you love the law. No, you better check yourself. And that ain't, that ain't the only thing now. It's a many things, like I said. We don't know what going to take nobody to hell. None of it may not. Jesus did it. God did everything he could to keep us from going to hell. That's why he gave us his son. And so I ain't going to tell you that none of you going to go to hell except for the one what the Bible say. Now, the Bible said there's a son of perdition, and he also said those that received the mark. Hey, take it from me, man. I don't know, but I do know what he did say. I'm not worried about all that stuff that I don't know, but what I'm concerned with about the stuff that I do know he said, that's what I'm talking about in some people. On this season, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He came the first time, just like he was prophesied in the Garden of Eden. He came the first time, and he is going to come that second time. I believe it because I read it. It says, for the Lord himself, not somebody else, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Oh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now that's what the Bible say. Now you can believe what you want. You can believe what you want. I just decided I would tell you what the Bible say. That's the only thing I'm going to ever do. Everything that I tell y'all on these videos. I can document it and you can find it as a fact. If you go and study your Bible. It's there. It's there. I ain't going to tell you none of my opinion. Because what my opinion is. Is beside the point. It doesn't matter what my opinion is, and, and matter of fact, it's not a, it, it doesn't matter what your opinion is either. But it's what God's word says. That's the only thing that matters. And that's the only thing that we're going to be judged out of that book. We are going to be judged, people, out of that Bible. We ain't going to be judged by no man or no preacher, no teacher. You ain't going to be judged by none of them. Those of us that teach, you ain't going to be judged by us. You ain't going to be judged by none of them that preach. You ain't going to have, there ain't no preacher going to judge you. It's going to be Christ himself and the word of God is going to judge every one of us. So in other words, now, if you want to take, play, play with your life, play with your afterlife. I'm going to say it like that because that's the only thing that's going to last. People, this world ain't nothing compared to what we got coming. Now, you mean to tell me you want to forfeit everlasting life with a king that died for you? That you're going to forever be with and everything going to be just right. Right here on this planet. You ain't going to heaven. You're going to be here. The, the meek shall inherit the earth. Now if we go up there, we ain't staying. The meek going to inherit the earth. This is where God going to be. God going to come down from heaven to the earth. The new earth. It's going to be a brand new earth the way God meant for it to be from the beginning. This whole world going to be dressed over. It's going to be redone to be the world he meant for it to be from the beginning. Now, this is where we're going to live throughout eternity, right down here on this brand new earth that God is going to prepare for us. Now, you believe what you want to believe. You believe what you want to believe. But I tell you what, people, you can, you can gamble on a thought and on a bet to say, well, I don't think this. I think all this is just a bunch of hogwash. But I'm going to tell you like this. Many men are going to try to do 
what thus says the Lord. In his, in his word, I'm going to try to do it like that. Because there's one thing about it. I would rather be wrong. In other words, now, if you are wrong, if you don't believe that there's a God and you think that everything's going to be all right and you live like that and you live any kind of way and you don't do what God say do and you don't do anything, you just live for yourself and whatnot. And then you get to the end of your life and there is a God. You got a problem. If I, on the other hand, live right according to the Bible standard, the best I know how, and accept Jesus as the king, and I'm wrong, well, I don't. I ain't got nothing to lose. For we, tomorrow we all die, and all of us going to be lost. But if I'm right, I will forever be glad that I made the right decision. There it is, people. It's up to you. It's up to you. The choice is yours. That's what I used to have one of my drill sergeants in basic training when I was in the United States military in the United States Army. He all that was one of his favorite phrases to say, the choice is yours. It, the choice always been ours. That's why God put it in our hand. He gave us free will. The choice is yours. So people, I wouldn't gamble with my second life. I wouldn't gamble with this here short term living. We live on this side by 70 years. Maybe by reason of strength 80. Some will live to be 100. And then now some can live, they said we could live to be 120. I know Moses did. And I know some people live longer than Moses. Because Aaron did. Aaron outlived, Aaron outlived Moses. Well, he did not live and Aaron died first. But Moses, uh, he died at 100. I think it was 123. That was how old Aaron was. I think it was 120. So he lived three years longer than, than Moses did. And I know they say Abraham lived about to be 175. If I'm not mistaken, 135, 175, somewhere along that. But he lived a long life. But they still don't compare to eternity. We're going to be somewhere in, for eternity, people. We're either going to be in the lake of fire, in which we got some scholars that said that, that that's not going to be forever. They said we're going to be totally destroyed in the lake of fire. I don't know that. Never been to the lake of fire. But I do know that they said we will live eternity with Christ. I don't know about that lake of fire, but I mean, I don't want to be destroyed. I want to be remembered. So in other words, I want to go from this life to the next life. I mean, come on, people. We say we want to go, but we don't live like it. We don't act like it. We don't, we don't, we, 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 we really, we, we, we don't give our homage to God like it. In fact, we do everything we can to, against God to keep from doing what's right. We'll make all kinds of excuses. There's none, people. There are no excuses. Let me tell you that again. There are no excuses. Think about it. Just think about it. This is Minute Man saying whatever you get, whatever you get into. Sorry this video is a little bit long, but hey, this had to be said. And matter of fact, some of you have asked me about that, and so I was addressing it tonight. So in other words, really and truly, don't none of us really know nothing about all what God got planned. We don't know that because we did. We be God. I don't know that, but I do know what I do know. And what I read, and so what I'm telling you is to take your time and study and read your Bible. Not read, study. Read and study. Then you will know what thus says the Lord. But then even then now, what you got to do? You got to abide by it to the best of your ability. Remember, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But God is not with, looking for perfect vessels. He's looking for yielded vessels. That's what he's looking for. Because Jesus already done done what we couldn't do. He already done that. But you can do what you can do. That's all Middle Man is speaking of. For those of you that asked this question, I hope I answered it within these last 35, 40 minutes whatsoever. But if you if whatever you get, whatever you get into, if God is not in it, it's best that you come out of it. Because it's gonna come to nothing. To the next video, next Bible study, whichever comes first. This is Middle Man saying peace and good night.